My thanks uh, to the senators of the Fine Gael group for bringing this motion to the, ha to the House, as it gives us a valuable opportunity to, of course, recognise and applaud the work that has been done, but even more to see where more needs to be done and where the gaps in our current system lie. And it must be said that the sheer volume of aid raised and given in donations and monies and supplies, in time and effort spent volunteering with refugees, the hospitality and the generosity of people opening up their homes is a true testament to the heart of the Irish people for their neighbour. And everyone who has helped should be immensely proud. As we look forward into the weeks and months ahead, I strongly believe that the people of Ukraine who find themselves in Ireland will be best served by a centralised response from government which plans for the long term. The goodwill of our communities can do so much, but it will never operate efficiently without centralised oversight, and responsibility for that lies with the government. We, did, we need a nepot styled sta task force assembled to coordinate the response and one figurehead with the ultimate responsibility for managing and processing and housing of Ukraine refugees. We have reception supports at our ports of entry, staffed by de departmental officials to help process incoming refugees. These have been operating on opening and closing hours. That is ridiculous. They need to be 24 hours as people are coming into the country and walking past closed offices and missing out on information and supports. We need fast-tracked Garda vetting for all individuals seeking to volunteer with refugees. And I know the Red Cross has raised this issue as well with regard to the pledges that have been made for housing the refugees. We need long-term supports and resources in relation to housing. What building checks are being carried out on dwellings used to house refugees? Are there hotels in which they are being kept fire certified? These questions need answering. And the questions cannot be bounced from department to department. A task force, force must order these inquiries. Anyone on the ground working with processing refugees will tell you the biggest problem with the system is opening the bank accounts. While they are being given PPS numbers, they have no public service card. And in order to receive one of those, they have to have a letter from a statutory body, which they do not have. With no public service card, they cannot open a bank account, and with no bank account, they cannot work. In 2022, the application process for a public service card still relies on face-to-face -face meeting, which must be booked by appointment. In the face of this humanitarian crisis, this is ludicrous. The process must be streamlined and made accessible to refugees. What long-term supports have been put in place for schools? English as a foreign language class, translators, temporary infrastructure, who will make this happen? The book cannot be passed on to local communities and volunteers. They lack the resources and the ability to institute the changes necessary to facilitate these people. Regarding the accommodation, the 2016 census shows 62,000 holiday homes in this country and just short of a quarter of a million vacant properties. I am all in favour of any incentive scheme being used to make use of these buildings. After all, it's for a good cause. But I have to wonder, all the homeless of Ireland, are they not a good cause? Are those in direct provision in this country not a good cause? Are refugees from conflicts in other parts of the world, are they not a good cause? Such a scheme would be an excellent idea. I would have my full support, but the question must be asked, why are we only thinking of this now? Food for thought. Our local authorities must have a central role in accommodating refugees. They must be given accurate, up-to-date figures on the number of refugees relocating into their area and their current housing location, so as to follow on for proper planning and processing. Each council must have a liaison officer who will deal directly with Ukrainians and who must be fluent in Ukrainian 
or be accompanied by a translator, and who must remain aware of all supports available to refugees in order to allow families best avail of them. We need a robust authentication system for qualification issued by Ukrainian educational and professional institutions, which strikes a fair balance between workability and thoroughness. We need to examine what needs to be done to facilitate the moving of students into third level educations so they can finish their degrees. Additionally, we had Irish students studying in Ukraine. How are they being facilitated to continue their degree at home? We need trauma counselling in every school which will be taking in Ukrainian students. The recognition of Ukrainian driving licence must extend to other vehicles, categories such as HGV, where applicable, again to facilitate work. And lastly, as unpopular as it may be, some for, saw, form of screaming must be put in place eventually. This is not to prevent legitimate refugees from entering the country, but instead to ensure that our resources do indeed go to those legitimate refugees rather than non-Ukraine residents in possession of a Ukraine passport who may seek to take advantage of our emergency entry requirements. The bottom line is that our response to this crisis must be centralised and the lines of communication down the chain must be robust. Only then will we be able to do the right thing by the people who need our help now. Thank you, Minister. Thank you, Senator.